Okay, let's continue our exploration of Compound. And I want now to talk about uh, an equity token. And we talked about equity tokens in uh, the, actually the previous course. Um, and this is going to be a, a tangible example. Uh, and we'll talk about C tokens. So C, uh, lowercase, and then token. So let's kind of go through and, and figure out what's actually going on uh, here. So, so basically, Compound, um, when you deposit uh, tokens uh, as a supplier, um, this is a service, um, and you expect a, a rate of return. Um, but it's kind of complicated to keep track in terms of all of the depositors, the different, um, the different tokens and things like that. So we want to do this in a way that's algorithmic and, and really uh, straightforward. And the logical thing to do is to tokenize the user's share of the pool. Okay, so you deposit something and then you actually get a token that represents your participation uh, in that pool. And, and Compound does this with their C token. And this is a very important innovation in terms of this protocol. And indeed, it's been copied by many other uh, protocols. So a simple way of, of keeping track is to actually create another ERC token. So think of uh, somebody depositing um, some ERC20 uh, token and then getting another token that actually represents their share of that pool. So it is a valuable asset, obviously, uh, that token because it represents a share of the, um, the deposits. So we'll go through um, how this actually happens, but uh, when you're a new uh, supplier, then new C tokens are uh, created. And uh, for example, uh, if this is DAI, uh, this would be like a C DAI. And uh, when you withdraw, this is basically a situation where the token is burned. So you no longer have, let's say, 10% uh, of the pool. Okay, so it's a very natural way uh, to keep track in an algorithmic uh, way. So it turns out that because these C tokens represent a share of uh, a liquidity pool, they're valuable. So th they're literally uh, collateralized by the pool. So, so these, um, these tokens uh, have like additional use. So they could be used uh, for collateral um, themselves. Okay, you can kind of see where we're going here that um, this creates a multiplier uh, type of effect. And it also allows Compound's token, uh, these C tokens, to be used in other DeFi protocol. So, uh, it, it, so it's possible, for example, if somebody wants to use, uh, let's say, ETH for a collateral, they can also use a C ETH, which represents uh, a, a token that's linked um, to a vault that's got some ETH uh, in it. Okay, so very uh, nice idea, and these tokens can be traded, right? So uh, you can have C ETH and ETH that are being uh, traded, DAI and C DAI. Okay, so it, it opens up many uh, possibilities here. So let's go through uh, a few examples, the best way uh, to see what's actually going on. So in this case here, I've got 2,000 DAI in the compound DAI market and a total of um, 500 C DAI, which represents the ownership in the market. So the, the ratio of C DAI to DAI uh, doesn't really matter uh, that much as I'm going to show you. So on the left, uh, we see that there are 2,000 DAI, that's the total supply. Um, 
the uh, one C die equals four die. And um, in this particular uh, example, uh, we've got two uh, depositors and uh, one has, um, has uh, 375, the other uh, 125, and this is basically uh, 500. So, so in this particular situation, um, you've got 2,000 die. There are two uh, traders in this particular market, and their shares are 75% and 25%. Okay? So that is kind of where we start. Um, so let's say that another trader comes in and deposits a thousand. So previously we had two thousand die. So remember we had two thousand die, and trader A represented seventy five percent of that, and trader B twenty five percent. So now somebody else comes in and we raise the total supply from two thousand to three thousand die. So again, one C die equals four, um, four die. So the new, um, there will be some more C die created. So we started with 500 C die. So an additional 250 are created. And you can see that trader C has 250 and 250 of 750 is 33 percent and again this makes sense so this is keeping track of the accounting here for uh the ownership of the supply okay so so think of we started with two thousand die somebody else comes in trader c and increases the supply to three thousand well uh of the one thousand out of three thousand that's 33 percent and that's exactly what's happening here. So within the C die, um, the trader has 33%. So um, what's the, the next step here? So suppose that there's interest that's accruing. So within the supply of 3,000 um, die, suppose there's interest accruing at a rate of 10%. And let's go through a year. And at the end of the year, the supply pool will be worth not 3,000 die, but 3,300 die. So what does that mean for the C token holders? Well, um, the number of C tokens has not increased. There's 750 C tokens but the value of the supply has increased. Okay, it's increased um, by 10%. So the new exchange rate is not one C die equals 4.4 die, but one C die equals 4.4 die. And if you look at the shares, so the shares haven't changed. So you can see that, uh, for example, trader C, who has 33% of the pool, well, uh, what is their 33% worth? Well, 33% of 3,300 die is 1,100. So again, they put in 1,000 die, and now after the 10% is paid, they get both that supply and the interest and 10% interest is, uh, it comes to uh, 1,100. Okay, so, uh, so this is a very elegant mechanism uh, to keep track of basically uh, the, the shares and the value uh, within uh, the pool. So again, uh, the C die uh, that you get after uh, supplying uh, the die, uh, the C die can be deployed uh, somewhere else. So there's no use just uh, sitting on the C die when you could potentially deploy it to another protocol and uh, potentially use that uh, to earn an extra rate of return.
or you could use it as collateral for uh, some other uh, protocol. And we'll talk about DYDX uh, within this course also, uh, or Uniswap. There are many different possibilities here uh, to actually uh, use this.